Hello everybody, welcome to Cycle Fab. This is the channel for modifying and building motorcycles. Hello everyone. Okay, this is a 1974 Ironhead that I have, <laughs> well, to say the least, I've done quite a bit to it. I started off actually with just that right there the engine and it did not look like that you'll see a photo of it here what it looked like when i found it in a barn literally so i'm gonna walk through this uh real quick do a, just a quick walk around kind of go over what i have done to it now well I'll go ahead and start here just the frame is a 73 the difference between the 73 and the 74 frame is nothing really pretty much the same i cut the frame about right here where the oil tank is and put on a hardtail now the hardtail was not made by me that was made by hammer and hand up in michigan two brothers and the reason why i picked their hardtail is because of the geometry of it it's more tangent to the backbone than the other ones that are on the market as far as I thought and what I mean by tangent is you really can't see it with the tank on it right now and I'll show you later but this backbone here and the tail line here where they come together is right here well if it's all on the same line they're tangent well, this isn't quite tangent. This is on a little bit different angle than this, but they're very, very close. Anyway, this is the reason why I chose that hardtail section. Anyway, this is my electronics box. You don't see electronics boxes a lot on Harleys. I don't know why, but I like it being there. I can hide a lot of things there. Plus, if I didn't have it, I would have just this big hole. And I think it actually adds to it to have some congruity or some flow to it with this piece being in here. Anyway, we'll go on. Now, one of the most interesting things... Oh, by the way, this is a single fire ignition where each cylinder fires individually. It just seems to work better as far as tuning. I honestly can't tell that much of a difference, but it sounded like a good idea, so I went ahead and went with it. And other bike builders go with it too, so there's got to be a reason why. All right, now this is a 1996 front end off of a Sportster, and I mated it to the 73 frame. The drum brake, and the reason why I use the drum brake is I just like the looks of them. Uh, they don't stop as well as this, but I'm going for looks here, not performance. The drum is a 1964. So I made it a 64 to a 96 front end, triple trees also, to a 73 frame. The headlight is Amazon. And it, it works great. I don't have any problems with it. And it was very inexpensive. I think it cost me like 25 to 35 bucks, something like that. Haven't had a problem with it whatsoever. I've got 237 miles on it. And the, the condition that you see it in right now is what I call in the white. In other words, you build everything, you fit everything, you get it together, get the fitment where you want it before you you know get on it and ride it because there's going to be some adjustment you're, you're going to have to deal with several issues hopefully not too many and you take it out and ride it around before you do the major cosmetics to it and what i mean by major cosmetics i'm talking about the course the powder coating the paint polishing there's some you know a lot of polishing that still needs to be done on it front drum for instance or this side anyway this is just things to do and that's what you will get to see now i have not shown any videos because there are not any of me actually building this and for reasons i just didn't want to show anybody my process 
I got to thinking about it later on, and that was very stupid and selfish of me. I mean, I, I needed to share this with everybody, so that's the reason why I started this YouTube channel, and I'm going to show you guys what my process is in building motorcycles. Now, I am not bike-specific at all. Uh, it doesn't matter to me what it is. It's just I've always wanted a Harley. I love their older engines as far as the looks and the cosmetics, or the charisma, I should say. So this is my first Harley, and I built it. Is it really super fast? No, of course not. But it is a blast to ride. It is fun. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go through the disassembly with you, and it'll be in fast forward time. And as I pull a part off, if I think it's interesting to the camera and to the audience, I'll show you how I modified it, like this right here, this license plate holder. I did not make that, although I did modify it greatly because when you get these, they're actually meant to go on the other side. Well, I didn't want to be like everybody else, just like the fuel tank. Um, typically, people put peanuts on there, which are great fuel tanks. I love the shape of them. It's just everybody else does it, and I wanted to be different. I had this tank. It was too wide, so I cut two inches out of the center of it. That's the reason why you see all the bondo there. And I welded it back together. And it, I like that teardrop look, uh, low profile, and it, it works with the clip-ons and everything. The uh, bezel I made, the spacer right here I made, that's made out of titanium by the way, and why it's made out of titanium, I had it laying around the shop, so I used it. That's the only piece of titanium on this bike. Titanium is very expensive, so I'm not going to use it anymore. Anyway, I made the bezel, uh, that's out of aluminum. The handles for the clip-ons I made, they're 5 eighths of an inch longer than what came with the clip-ons themselves, the bracket. And these are not aluminum, these are steel. Why I made them out of steel? Because I didn't have any aluminum that size, so I used steel tubing, mechanical tubing. Works fine. I'm not really concerned about weight issues. This bike is light enough with my heavy butt sitting on it. So that little bit of weight isn't gonna make that much of a difference to this bike. Anyway, you caught me in mid-process here. So that's where I'm bringing this bike to you. And I'm gonna disassemble it. It's going to be in fast forward motion. If I think something is interesting, I will pull it off. Obviously, we'll be on slow-mo or standard speed. And I'll explain it to you, what I did to it. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It depends on if I think that I need to or not. Uh, this is my first video, so just bear with me. Some of the other things I made is like the brake lever here. All right. Now, I copper plated that. We do that here in the shop. I just like the looks of copper plating. I think it's cool. And I'll go back. I'll copper plate it again and polish it where it has that nice, you know, shiny look to it. But then I'll powder coat it with clear powder coat so it will not tarnish. I don't really want the tarnished look. Some people think it's cool, and it is, but not on this piece. I want it to be shiny. So. Of course, these are brass blinkers. The chain is not rusted. The chain is copper plated and dirty. So you'll, that, that will look different also. I'll also re-copper plate it. See if I can get in there a little closer for you to see. Right there. Anyway, you get the idea. But really, no, it's not rust. Now, I try to hide as much of the wiring as I can. Now, this wiring, I did not need to use wires that large, but I like the looks of them. I thought they looked actually pretty interesting. Anyway, uh, I wanted to hide as many wires as I could on this thing. So, a lot of the wiring is ran through the tubing. Now, you notice there's no wiring for the brake switch. And the reason why is because I used a micro brake switch back here, not one of the mechanical ones that has uh, 
chain on it or a, a spring that connects to the brake rod. I, I tried one, it's ugly, I didn't like it, so I went with a very small brake switch down in there. Yeah, there it is, right there. That's part of it. That, that's the trigger that actually pushes it up against it to activate it, or actually lets go of it to activate it. And here's the wiring that goes into the front. This same brake switch, by the way, I used on my front brake. Now, these are, these levers are not originals, of course. They're repops, reproductions of the 1930s, 1940s style. And you can see here, I did some machining so I could get a brake switch right here. I, d I didn't know really any other place to put it. Now, that's all that, I mean, there, there's a lot more on it that I made, but you really needed to see the building process from the very beginning. And you'll be seeing that on other bikes. Like I said, I'm not bike specific. So the next one is not going to be a Harley. It's going to be something else. I don't know what, but I also changed my mind quite a bit. And depending on what I read in the comments, it may be another Harley. One reason why I don't want to do another Harley is, well, they're kind of expensive. Just the base bike uh, to start off with or engine or whichever way I want to go. And, you know, it's, it's a cost. Whereas some of the Japanese bikes, not so much. So, we'll see what happens there. Say, so, uh, something I also wanted to show y'all before I get into the full disassembly is the uh, fork tubes and what I did to them. Now, you're, you're probably wondering what these are. Now, I made these. These are the brackets that hold the brake tube on that has the cable inside of it. Now, I did not have to do that. I chose to do that. I could have just brought the cable itself down to here, made some kind of a mount to connect to the um, brake shoe lever. But I really like that retro look. And originally the Sportsters did have this tube here. So I went ahead and went with that and I had to make these brackets here and here. Made those out of just block uh, uh, aluminum billet. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Now something else about these forks you might notice they don't have anything on them in the way of mounts like a you know, speedo mount or um, radio uh, brake caliper mount. And the reason why is because I shaved all those off. This is called shaving a fork. And basically, I took it apart, took the forks apart and put them on my lathe and uh, turned them down. And you, you, these are really, really thick. Uh, you can do a lot with them. You can put little grooves in them and so on and so forth. I didn't want to do that. I just turned them down and polished them. Now, these the internal forks, I actually cut four inches off of these. Matter of fact, this is one of the cutoff pieces. Okay, there's the original threads on the inside. Hope you can see that okay. And I cut four inches off of it. Uh, pretty thick too. The reason why I cut four inches off of it is because, and I've seen people do this, they you know need the front end shortened, so they just leave two, three, four inches hanging out of the top. Well, I, I, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I have the means and the ability to, you know, cut them, return them on the ID inside dimensions, and thread them. So basically, what that means is I did this to the inside of that in here. It's not that difficult to do if, again, you have a lathe. Now, it does not require a lathe this size. This is an 18 by 40. That's pretty good size. They do make them much larger than this, but they also make them smaller. 
that you can mount on a very sturdy workshop bench, either metal or wood. Um, that's very, very solid, by the way. That would work just fine for doing that. The reason why I did that is because when I put this hardtail on the rear, it, it lowered the bike. Now, it lowered it, I believe, two inches. Um, now, if I would have went with the standard fork lengths and brought them where they're supposed to be, up to here, then it, the bike would be sitting up here and the, the frame would be really high in the front. As a matter of fact, it would be, you know, like four inches higher. And this would be back here. Actually, it would pivot off of the rear axle, so this would be even higher. So it would give me, you know, a really steep angle on my frame. Now, some people may think that that looks cool. I personally don't. But another thing to consider is that it really screws up the geometry of the bike. Uh, going in a straight line, you won't notice it, but if you go try to go around a corner at any amount of speed, you know, especially a high speed, that's not cool. It's, it's not going to want to work, typically. And you'll get a... It, it, it's just, don't do it, uh, really, don't do it. You can, you don't have to cut these. You can get springs that you put in here after market. I've got a fork seal leaking. I put new fork seals in here, but apparently I didn't do one well enough, but that's okay. I'll put new fork seals in it again. You can put springs in here that will lower the stock front end two inches. I needed four inches, so that really wouldn't have helped me. Um, but, you know, lowering it two inches is much better than staying stock and being four inches, you know, up here. Anyway. Oh, yeah, this is, by the way, on the 74, the shifter and the brake are opposite of what they are now. They do have conversion kits that change all of this over. But it's just a bunch of excess linkage, excess weight, and it, it doesn't look very pretty, and I wanted to keep it original. Um, you just have to keep in your mind that, you know, hey, I want to apply the brake, that, you know, it's on the other side. I want to shift, it's on the right side. So I, I made this shifter for it. Also, I copper plated it, just like I did the brake lever, which I showed you guys already over here anyway I'm getting all the fluids out of the bike before I disassemble it obviously and, you know you, pretty good idea to do that before you start because I mean to get this engine out and to get it back in I will actually physically lay the bike over of course there won't be anything on it it'll be just the frame and the motor but in all the little external pieces like the generator and oil filter and everything that I get off that motor on the outside of it, I will, before I lay it over and unbolt it and actually lift the frame, actually I'll lay it this way, and lift the frame off of the engine itself. Anyway, I, I said I'd lift it that way. Maybe I'll do it the other way. I, I don't remember. But when I get to that point, uh, you'll be here. You'll see it. Now, if you're wondering what these cheesy zip ties are, it's because I... This is the horn, by the way. I forgot to tighten the bolt for the horn before I put my electrical box in. Well, this is not a simple thing after the wiring's done to take this entire electrical box off just to tighten a screw so I knew that I would be taking the bike back apart and to do the painting and the powder coating and the polishing and da 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 so I, I just needed to put a few miles on it put a little bit more than what I was expecting on it so I just you know zip tied this in uh, even if the screw did fall out but it can't because it hits the bottom of this the horn's not going anywhere, but I didn't want it to sit there shaking around all the time. It might damage the horn. Now, oh yeah, 
something else. If you ever do build a bike to the point that you actually physically go into the engine itself and rebuild it, when you initially fire this up, the rings need to be set on the pistons. That's why you're firing. You need to um, go through a little break-in routine. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done it on a motorcycle engine. And it, setting the rings is what it's called. But you rev it high and let it come back down, rev it up again, let it come back down. There, there's a scenario that you go through to do this. Anyway, after I did that, I rode it around a little bit. And when I say a little bit, I'm talking like 20, 25 miles. And then I drained the oil out of it. Well, and I, I put fresh oil in it, obviously. I didn't use the same oil. Now, this oil that's in here is at 237-mile mark. Get it out. And you can't see it really. I mean, I can barely see it even with a light in it. There's just maybe a few little metallic very microscopic it, it's it's not bad at all that, that's fine that's fine what you don't want to see is big chunks of metal that that's bad that means something's wrong so just just even after i, I drained it after the first 25 miles it, it didn't look bad at all so you know just keep in mind your first oil change now people do say that yeah first oil change at 500 miles well i don't like to do that I, um, oil is cheap, building an engine is expensive, and you do not want to trash out an engine just because you're running oil with metal in it, and don't, just don't do that. You know, after 20, 25 miles, drain the oil out of it and put fresh oil in it. Take my advice. It, it would really be a good idea to do that if you're building the engine totally. Now, I did not assemble this engine. The only two things that I did not do myself on this bike is engine assembly, and I did not build the hardtail. If you recall, uh, this was built by Hammer and Hand up in Michigan, two brothers that own the shop. I like their design and all that, and it, it works great. It, fantastic, fantastic. The assembly was done by a gentleman up in Justin, Texas. He owns Iron Head Cycles, and this is all that he works on are Iron Heads. And I actually interviewed people to assemble this engine, and I just know. <laughs> I was very skeptical of some of the people I talked to. I get Get somebody professional to assemble your engine if you're not confident in your own ability. I could have assembled it. There's plenty of people, relatives in my family that have this background, but I didn't want to bother them. And I wanted it just, I just did not want any headache. So I got this guy to do it. And he did a fantastic job, really did. Very professional gentleman. Just wanted to touch base with you on the front end, especially. Now this one you really see that there is absolutely nothing on this. I turned everything off of it. It's called shaving a leg or shaving the forks. And I really think it really just pops, it makes it look really good. But right now I'm draining all the fluids out, oil, to take this off the oil filter uh, and you whenever you drain fuel out of the fuel tank expect to you know make a mess fuel kind of goes everywhere so it's okay just don't have an open flame out obviously and anyway i'm fixing to start tearing this baby down and you will see the entire process Hey guys, thanks for watching. I didn't get as far as what I wanted to on this video. I talked a little longer than what I expected to. 
I just wanted to get to know you guys, uh, let y'all get to know me. So please feel free, give me some comments down below. Uh, if you have any ideas of what kind of bikes you would like to see me build, please let me know. I'm here for you guys. It gives me interest to interact back and forth as far as you know comments that you leave and what I do here. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, now next week, uh, the same time, I'll have another video out and it'll be me tearing this bike down. Now that's kind of boring because it'll be in fast forward. I will stop and talk once in a while if I see something that I think you might find interesting or something that I need to explain to you. So again, thanks for watching. Be sure and hit that like button if you like me and go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you want to. Hit the bell so you'll get a notification when I have another video out, which will be next week. I'm not sure exactly what the, the day will be, but anyway, so long. Cycle Fab out.